Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. As millions of Americans get ready to vote this year, Congress is still debating what that process should look like. Washington, D.C. Bureau reporter Peter Zampa is speaking with elected officials and civil rights leaders about what we can expect in a potentially monumental year at the polls. Disappointed but not defeated. A murky outlook for Mark Morial, the president of the National Urban League, as voting rights legislation remains stalled in the U.S. Senate. Two bills would make permanent some of what made the 2020 general election the highest voter turnout election ever. But Senate Republicans are opposed to these bills, and two Democrats voted against nuking the filibuster rule to see the bills across the line. The ease of voting should be a fundamental in American democracy. Morial says the 2022 midterm election will be negatively impacted if these bills do not pass. He argues laws are being passed in Republican states that would restrict voter access. Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley offers a bleak assessment if Congress does not act. The result will be a, a broad understanding across America that the, uh, the, uh, the elections are, are deeply biased. Uh, and that therefore they're not legitimate. But Morial cautions against questioning the legitimacy of elections. It's the tactic President Trump and his supporters used in 2020 after he lost. Arizona Republican Governor Doug Ducey did not join Trump in objecting to Arizona's results, but Ducey tells us he's not on board with these bills being floated in Washington. I have confidence in Arizona's elections, and I think we'll improve them even more. Arizona's 2020 results were unjustifiably scrutinized. An audit found no election fraud. Despite that finding, Ducey says he's considering a number of bills moving through his legislature that could curtail voting access. When we have the opportunity to make improvements or reforms that we should. The first primary elections of 2022 are set for March 1st in Texas. Reporting in Washington, I'm Peter Zampa. State Auditor Mike Harmon says there are still a lot of problems with Kentucky's unemployment insurance system. The annual audit shows a lot of money was paid out in fraudulent claims. Auditor Harmon says random samples showed at least $118,000 in fraudulent claims from people falsely claiming they work for the state. Many people in Lexington are still reeling after the weekend shooting death of a 10-year-old boy. Landon Hayes died on Sunday. Police said he was the victim of a murder-suicide involving his mother's boyfriend. In response to his death and other recent tragedies, the city's One Lexington Initiative is opening up the A Center tonight for anyone in the community who needs grief counseling. Lindsay Kampfer works for Bluegrass Care Navigators. She and others help students, teachers, and staff in Fayette County Public Schools after situations like this one. Children are more likely to experience feelings of guilt or to blame themselves for the cause of the death when they're not given the truth regarding the cause or the reason for the law. Lieutenant Combs said the Lexington Police Department's peer support officers get special training to provide emotional first aid. He said following an incident like the one Sunday, officers are taken back to headquarters for a check on their mental health. Blood supplies in Kentucky are dropping. The bad weather we've seen in the last few weeks has had an impact on the amount of units the Kentucky Blood Center is getting through donations, and that's having an impact on local hospitals. UK health officials say that they would not be able to do what they do on a daily basis without the Kentucky Blood Center, who supplies blood to hospitals all across the state, including UK. The blood that we're collecting today will likely leave this blood center tomorrow to go to a hospital. That's how quickly and how urgently it's needed. We have a link to where you can schedule an appointment to donate on WYMT.com. Well, some spots have been watching clouds develop as we've gone through the afternoon. Some spots are dealing with uh, some of that uh, near overcast out there because We've got a few sprinkles moving through the region now and more a little bit later on. I-64 at Moorhead, you see yeah, the sun trying to break out there with some of the uh, uh, overcast we're still seeing as we head down to I-75 in London. A little bit more sunshine down there, all dry on the roads. That's where most of us are. Into the mid-50s for the vast majority of us, a few low 50s as you head up toward Ashland and Moorhead where they've had a little bit more cloud cover and the highest elevation is a little bit cooler as well, 46 wise, 47 at Pine Mountain. There's a few of our sprinkles pushing through the Big Sandy down into, eh, let's say, portions of uh, Floyd into Pike County and eventually 
on into uh, Harlan and Letcher County as well, trying to sneak into not Leslie and Perry as well. Not a whole lot. And our attention turns to the west. Cold front trying to bring a few showers now into the far western part of the area. So keep that WYMT weather app handy. Not necessarily because it will be too, too bad out there, but something to keep an eye on. You'll have the radar in the palm of your hand with that app at all times. Partly cloudy tonight in many spots down into the mid 30s as we watch a few of those showers move through. I'll have the latest on when we could see another chance of rain coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. The U.S. military calls climate change a threat to national security. The Army is detailing its new strategy to adapt, calling for a 50% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, with an ultimate goal of zero emissions by 2050. As part of that, goals include creating an all-electric, non-tactical, or non-combat fleet by 2035, and fully electric tactical vehicles by 2050. When it comes to tactical vehicles, um, we need to work with industry and with academia to develop the technologies we need. The Army also aims to reduce emissions from its bases. Dollywood made a huge announcement for its employees. Park and resort officials announced they will cover 100% of tuition, fees, and books for any employee who chooses to pursue further education. The program launches on the 24th of February for all seasonal, part-time, full-time employees, and they can enroll on day one of their employment. One Mountain View Elementary teacher is teaching her students about bullying by letting them share their stories anonymously with each other. WYMT's Jay Saylor spoke with them about the assignment that led to writing and publishing a book. Mountain View Elementary English teacher Laditra Morgan asked her students to write words someone has said that hurt them and words that healed them, hoping to teach about the negative impact bullying can have. That has positively impacted how they speak to each other, um, how they interact with one another, and overall, I mean, I've noticed a lot less bullying issues. The assignment turned into the students writing and publishing a book, sharing their stories anonymously, called Words That Hurt and Words That Heal. So they might be reading over something that one of their classmates read and would have never in a million years thought, oh, you know, this could be anybody beside me that's going through this. So it was a really good chance for them to try and understand each other better. Morgan already notices a change in the way her students interact with each other. You never know what kids go through and like what they feel and like other people, like other students can say stuff that hurt. And mental health is really big, like it's not a joke. We can like compare and contrast and see what people's going through and how they're going through it. And we can help each other and it's brought, it's, yeah, it's brought us closer. The students feel they can connect to their classmates on a deeper level. I feel like it is a good thing for like us because people get to hear our side of our stories. It's mostly like adults or like they feel this, but kids don't ever get to share what they feel. The kids say being able to anonymously share their feelings and read their classmates' stories help them personally and as a group. In Leslie County, Jade Saylor, WYMT Mountain News. You can visit our website at WYMT.com for the link to purchase the book Words That Hurt and Words That Heal. The Super Bowl, of course, is this Sunday, and West Virginia's baby dog made a prediction on who she thinks will win the game. At the end of Governor Jim Justice's news conference today, he brought out his procrastinator pet, prognosticator pet, rather. <laughs> Governor Justice says baby dog is going with, who else? The Cincinnati Bengals. Baby Dog predicts the Bengals will win in a close one, 30 to 28. The Bengals will take on the Los Angeles Rams. Kickoff is at 6.30 this Sunday. Bipartisan legislation will be introduced at the state capitol to reduce what supporters say is an alarming rate of suicides across the Commonwealth. It's a bill, if passed, could temporarily take away a mentally disturbed person's access to his or her firearm. Garrett Weimer spoke with a parent whose child was killed in the mass shooting at Sandy Hook 10 years ago. And we also hear from a Kentucky woman who was shot 12 times during a mass shooting. I survived 12 bullets in a mass shooting at Fifth Third Bank in Cincinnati, Ohio. Whitney Austin says it's a miracle she survived September 6, 2018. Now she's urging Kentucky state legislators to help curb suicide rates and mass shootings. I'm tired of people saying there's nothing we can do when we've done nothing. But there is something. 
Republican State Senator Paul Hornback and Democratic State Senator Morgan McGarvey are introducing a bill called Crisis Aversion and Rights Retention. What this bill does is it very quickly um, allows a police officer to petition the court to go and, and remove a firearm from someone who is in imminent danger to themselves or others. You know, this person is in a crisis, and that's why it's called crisis aversion, to try to avert that crisis and get them help. Megan Cole's aunt, Linda Hines, had a crisis. Hines committed suicide. She was 55 years old. Removing the chosen means gives suicidal individuals something they desperately need, and that's time. Time with his son is what Mark Barden can't get back. His son Daniel died in the Sandy Hook Elementary School mass shooting. He was seven years old. For all these families who have to live the rest of their life thinking, I wish I could have prevented that, there were warning signs. Closer to home this past Sunday, there were two murder suicides, one in Lexington and one in Nicholasville, those shootings just hours apart. Senator Hornback says the proposed bill, known as CAR, has some issues to work out, such as who determines if a person is a danger to themselves or the public. And in this bill, is this bill perfect? No, it's not perfect because there are no perfect bills. We asked Whitney Austin if this type of legislation existed in Ohio, would she still be a victim of gun violence? So could it have made a difference? Absolutely. But it's not 100% a certainty that it would have. In Frankfurt, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Austin is walking around with bullet fragments still in her body. As for the bill, Senator Hornback says he does not know if the bill can get through this legislative session because there are some issues that still need to be ironed out. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, the new year is not so new now, and now is when so many of those resolutions get thrown out the window. What psychologists say you can do to stay on track. And a few drops of rain will be possible tonight thanks to a passing uh, little weak system moving through. I'll have the latest on top of that, on that, and how it affects our sunny week.